In this video, we're going to be discussing how to change your IVA or VVA solenoids on any of CAT's twin turbo heavy duty truck engines. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here, and today I need to shave. But other than that, I need to show you how to change an IVA or VVA solenoid. So why would you be changing one of these solenoids? Because if you have any twin turbo cat truck engine, so that'd be a C11, C13, or C15, with a twin turbo setup, these fail a lot. You might be getting an IVA not responding code, current low, current high, and you might have to do some troubleshooting before you change the solenoid, but this is a how-to video on how to change the solenoid. Okay, so let's get into the video. So the first thing you're going to have to do is remove your valve cover, standard C15 valve cover here. We're doing solenoids 3 and 4, and they're numbered after the cylinder of the rover. So that's your Jake solenoid. This is your IVA3, and that's your IVA number 4, sometimes also called VVAs. So first thing you're going to do, obviously, unplug it. And then you're going to have these four little Torx bit style heads. And we'll talk a little bit about those more. But you're going to need some sort of bit driver. And this is not a standard Torx. This is a Torx Plus. And it's a Torx Plus 10, but you also need a 6. And I'll talk about why you will need that shortly. And usually you're going to change them in sets of two. And I will explain that in a little bit here. So after you loosen all the bolts, the whole solenoid comes up like that, but be careful because it is segmented. So as you can see there, that was a Torx bit, but it's not a straight Torx. You're going to need a 6 and a 10, but those are not Torx. CAT actually doesn't use Torx on any of their truck engines. They use Torx Plus which if you put a normal Torx in a Torx Plus, it's going to fit loosely. A Torx Plus 10 is slightly bigger than a normal Torx 10. The same with the 6 that you'll need. And the 6 is hard to find because it's so small. Just wanted to say that. So this is the cat box that's going to come with your new actuator kits. And it's a reman, so you're going to need to keep your old actuators to return for a core charge. And that's the part number there, 10R7302. And this will fix any of the IVA solenoids, like I said, on a C11, C13, or C15. Does not matter, it's a universal kit. So, when you open your box, these are the contents. You will have two smaller boxes, each of which will contain a solenoid. You will have bolts for each solenoid, and the bolts will be two different lengths. You'll have to read the description on the bolt bag to get the right bolt length, or you can just compare it to the bolts that came out of the old solenoids. You also get a detailed instruction sheet there that will talk about how to remove them and install them. So this is your new solenoid. You'll notice it has two smaller screws that are holding it together. Those just hold the solenoid together because the solenoid is segmented so if those weren't in there it could fall apart now you'll want to clean the area where the solenoid bolts to on your iva slash jake housing and inspect it for cracks uh, cracks between the oil portholes there are somewhat common and can cause a lot of problems for you all right so in your instruction sheet it's going to give you the torque and the torque sequence for torquing these solenoids now most guys don't torque these however i usually do um, pretty much anything under a valve cover i try to torque if possible and you'll notice that you need to torque these to 20 to 22 inch pounds so that's less than two foot pounds and i bought this called a fat wrench it's actually a gunsmithing torque wrench but it, it goes in very small increments so from 10 up to about 65 inch pounds and i've been using it for injector stud nuts um as well as these ivas and i really like it and it was pretty cheap it was only about 35 dollars so once you get your bolts started you're going to need to remove the retaining screws so my bolts are started but they're not torqued yet you can see there because i could loosen them and you're going to want to remove the retaining screws that hold the solenoid together they're only there for shipment and if you leave them in there, they can give you problems with 
getting the bolts in properly. Um, they're not meant to hold the solenoid together. The bolts are supposed to hold the solenoid together. So please remove them. So I've removed those two little bolts and the four main bolts are still loose. So I'm gonna use my fat wrench here. I've set it to 22 inch pounds and you're gonna go in a crisscross fashion. So I'm just gonna rotate the torque wrench, obviously in a clockwise manner until it reaches 22 and it'll pop. There you go. Then you're gonna go across. Like I said, this is a cross pattern. Torque this one. And then you're gonna go to that one. Now, I'm gonna do this for both and you might be wondering, hey, what if I only need one solenoid replaced? Why are the kits sets of two? I don't know. Um, Cat sells them in kits of two. You can buy the solenoids individually, however, they're fairly expensive. They're about $175 each if you want, just want one new one, opposed to the repair kit, which includes two. That's only like $220. So you're not really saving a lot to just replace one and they have the same warranty. So that's torqued. Everything's connected. Good job.